we need a quick fiqh break. Does khushu' break the salah? Now, this isn't a fiqh course, but this is something that we do want to be able to explore. The Prophet Sallallahu in that famous hadith, it's called, literally called the hadith of the man who prayed badly. There's a guy who's praying, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the salah, he tells him, go back and pray because you didn't pray. So now he goes back and prays. And then he goes back to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, go back and pray because you didn't pray. Go back and pray because you didn't pray. And then he goes back and prays the third time. And then he comes back to Rasulullah Sallallahu and the Prophet Sallallahu says to him, go back and pray because you didn't pray. And so the man's like, Ya Rasulullah, I don't know how to pray a prayer other than this. This is the only prayer that I know how to pray. And so the Prophet Sallallahu then tells him how to pray. And of the things that he says, and, and the pillars of Salah are extracted from this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu says, to stand and read what is easy to you from the Qur'an, and that's why standing is a pillar of the prayer. Without getting into too many fiqh tangents, but if a person has the ability to stand, then they have to stand in the prayer. You know, a friend was just texting me recently, and he, was, he just made a comment about he was in New York, and he was praying on park benches. And I was like, what do you mean, praying on a park bench? And he said, you know, I kind of just sit down and I pray on the bench. I was like, no, you can't do that. You have to pray standing up. Qiyam is a pillar of the prayer. Some people will talk about just, I, pr I pray in my car. It's like, no, you can't just pray in your car. Qiyam is a pillar of the prayer. If a person has like a, a, a reason to be afraid, then a person can pray sitting down. Well, I mean, let's talk about the, uh, the sit, praying in the car situation. Most people will find themselves praying in a car because they're in a space where they're really, like, a, like simple example. You're going to go pick up somebody for the airport. Yes. And you're in the cell phone lot, maybe. Great. Right? Now, if you get out of the vehicle, and usually that stuff is crowded, right? Cars coming in and out. Like, you get out and pray between the lanes. It's like, now you're risking, like, blocking another vehicle from getting in. Okay. So, like, what's your option there? You... So, if a person's in a circumstance yeah. where they literally cannot get out of the car, right? I'll give you an easier example. You're in traffic. Sure. You're in bumper to bumper traffic and you're going to miss out on the salah and you can't get out of your car. You so just you just pull over? You, just, you, can't, you can't pull over because you're in traffic. Right now I'm saying pull over to the shoulder or something. You can't even do that. Okay. Like I'm talking bumper to bumper. Like I've been in, I've been in situations like uh, specifically going into the Holland Tunnel from Manhattan. Sure. Like you just can't move. Yeah. You can't move your car. And so if, if that's the case, then you would be able to pray, uh, you know, sitting down. It's like a very uh, passive prayer. Yeah, I mean, but a lot of times people, when they say, I'm, I'm praying in my car, like it's just, you know. It's convenience. It's, it's convenience or I don't want to go through or I'm, I'm like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a real fear. Okay. It's a imagined fear. What I mean by that is like, oh. I don't people, want people looking at me. Yeah, people will look at me. Okay, that's, you know, that's not a reason for you to pray, uh, you know, in your, in your car. A quick experience that I had. Just two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was praying in, uh, I had pulled up to HEB, which is our local grocery store chain here in Texas. And I go into the parking lot and I realized that I hadn't prayed Asur. I thought I prayed Asur at home. When I got to the parking lot, I realized that I didn't pray it. And so I, and it was like maybe 30 minutes towards Maghrib. And so I decided that I was going to, I didn't want to have to drive back home or anything. I'm just going to pray in the parking lot. No big deal. So the parking lot is pretty much empty. And so I park my car so that it's my sutra, so that it's in between me and the qibla. And I stand behind it and I go, Allahu Akbar, and I enter into the prayer. Almost like within, before even going into Rukur, a car slowly pulls up behind me. And it's right behind me. It's not to the right of me where I can see them in my peripheral vision, not to the left of me. Not in, it's right behind me in my blind spot. I'm like, this is so annoying. Of all the places they Out could of park. all of the places where this guy could have parked, this entire place is empty. They pull up in my blind spot, and I'm like, okay. So I pray a brief prayer, and by the tashahud time, I'm, I'm really annoyed. And I'm like, whoever is behind me, I'm about to tell them, like when you see a Muslim praying like this, do not park behind them. I'm just going to educate them. And I say, salam alaikum, salam alaikum. And I look behind me and I see two brown ladies, okay? One is like young and the other is elderly. 
So two Desi ladies. But they don't look Muslim or anything like that. So I just change my mind and I, I get up and I start walking. And then as I'm walking, one of them goes, yo! <laughs> She goes, yo. And I'm like, yes. I look back and she's like. <laughs> and the old lady, she's like, her hands is like shaking and stuff. She's giving me the thumbs up. I'm like, okay. So then I assumed that like they had basically saw me praying. And so they wanted to pull up to kind of, you know, protect me. MashaAllah. Oh, okay. So it was like, a, it was a nice, sweet gesture. But, and maybe they were Muslim, you know, but. It's, it's just the idea of, yeah, so praying in your park. Praying in parking lots fine. So you have sisters all the time. They, they've mastered the art of praying in uh, dressing rooms. <laughs> they go into stores and they'll pray in a dressing room. Uh, but praying on a park bench when there's no need to, uh, you have the capacity to stand. It's a pillar of the prayer. You have to stand. I, I think this whole ex uh, situation, we should reenact. Reenact the whole situation? Yeah, like pull up to an HGV parking lot, get a couple of women in the car. That they, like This whole thing is totally capable. I mean, it's a beautiful gesture at the end of the yeah. day, like the idea of watching over somebody while they're praying. Just don't do it from their blind spot. That's yeah, all. Yeah. Um, so from that hadith, the Prophet wasallam says, stand and then read what is easy to you of, of the Quran. So you read Surah Al-Fatiha, it's a pillar of the prayer. Other hadith indicate that Surah Al-Fatiha is a pillar of the prayer. And when he says uh, ruku', he says, and bow, hatta tatma'inna raka'an. Bow until you reach itma'inan. Itma'inan is tranquility, serenity. So bow until you're tranquil in your bowing. When he says prostrate, he says prostrate until you are uh, tranquil in your prostration. When you get up from ruku', hatta tastawi qa'iman. Until you are completely erect. A lot of people, when they, they hit you with the 45 degree angle, and then they're already on their way for, to sujood. And so the Prophet sallallahu describe these things and because of that tranquility is also considered to be a pillar of the prayer Hushur is also considered to be a, tr a pillar of the prayer the question that becomes is my prayer invalid if i don't have khushur it is a pillar of the prayer do i have to have this mindfulness and so the scholars debated and ibn al-qayyim he has a, a lengthy discussion in his uh book um the, uh, the book on the inner dimensions of Salah by Ibn Qayyim. He talks about the two views of the scholars. The first view is that a prayer without khushu' is invalid. And he talks about their evidences. And I'll just summarize some of these evidences that if the majority of the prayer lacked humility and comprehension, uh, he says uh, that it has no reward, that that prayer has no reward. Uh, and, and they mentioned that when you say the prayer is lacking humility and comprehension. humility is how they talk about mindfulness. Okay. So and the second thing was what? Mind comprehension. Comprehension. Okay. For sure is the challenge with khushur is that it's a comprehensive term. Okay. It includes all of these things. When we talked about khushur, we talked about its level. We're talking about what? Focus. We're talking about intent. We're talking about humility, hum humility, humbleness. We're yeah. Uh, we're talking about, um, like, uh, zoning in, right? Uh, flow. Yep. Right. All of that combined. Yep. All okay. of that. So you're standing. That emotion that you're standing in front of a king. You're standing in front of the king. You're standing would, in front of the king of kings. It would be a good idea to get like a checklist of like what are the elements of khushu. But here's the thing. We yeah. did the checklist already. We went through like the different meanings of khushu in the Quran. Right. So that's a, a good enough checklist. Some of it is humility. Some of it is presence. At the same time, I don't want people to get so caught up in the detail. Like, you know what khushur is at the end of the day. Like, you know when you're present in Salat. You know how that feels. You know when, when you're aware of what you're saying. And, and, may, and maybe I'm getting overly uh, technical, technical and material with the understanding of the concept. But like, it, like I, I feel like getting into Salat, at least getting to do two raka, it's like getting into doing a heavy set. Okay. Right. You're gonna do heavy set of weightlifting. You're saying. Yeah. Like okay. it could be a deadlift, a bench, a squat, and you're in there. You gotta focus. You're like you step in. Like you, your posture is there. Your form is there. Your intent is there. You're imagining yourself doing the movement. Yep. Right. And then when you're actually making the movement, you're not thinking about anyone. Where you park your car. Yeah. You're not thinking about where you park your car. You're not thinking about the guy next to you that might be grunting really loud uh, or whatever. Right. 
you're there, you're going to make that movement, you're going to lift that weight, and then you put it down, and in the end, you just breathe and relax. Mm-hmm. Right? Like that, to me, like, and, and even then, it's just like the, even the posture check, right? Like, are, are my feet lined up? Is my torso, my hips, my shoulders, everything? And, and the point here is also is that you said a heavy weight, right? So it has to be something that's personally challenging for you. If you're doing something that's really light, it's very easy for you to be able to think of where you parked your car. Sure, when you get on the things. elliptical, for example. When you get on the elliptical, <laughs> or even if you're doing those same movements, but you're doing it with a really light weight, Yeah. right? Yeah, it yeah. has to be something where it's not so heavy that I can't lift it and it's yeah. going to collapse on me. And at the same time, it's not so light that I can have a conversation with the person next to me and be distracted and all of these types of things. Right. It has to be at that sweet spot of challenge. Sure. And it's the same thing for Salah, that you are in a position where I am speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm using suwar and I'm using uh, different uh, adhkar that are challenging for me, for me to be able to remember so that it forces me to be in that state of presence. And so this, this notion, this idea of flow is described by athletes and, and not just athletes, but even people who are doing something that they have the skills for, but it is a challenging version. And so a neurosurgeon talks about how he was doing an operation that he had never done before, but he's got the skills. And so he became so absorbed in doing this operation that a part of the roof fell in while he was doing the operation. When he, it was a long operation, however long it took. Afterwards, he looked at his, he sees like this rubble on the side of the operating room. And he says, what happened? And they said, this happened while you were doing the operation. And he was like, I had no idea. I didn't even notice, I didn't hear anything. And that's important because when we read on side of the Salaf, and the way that they were in the Salah, like some of the early Muslim generations. They're in the operating room of their soul. They're, they're in the operating room for their soul, and we hear about these things, and we, it seems like it's so, it's such an exaggeration. Like, like. It's like you hear the arrow and hitting the leg or whatever during a battlefield, and then after the battle, you're like, you're gonna take that arrow out. Yep. And he's like, let me get into Salah, and then by the time he's done, the arrow's gone. Yeah, yeah. So Urwa bin Zubair, he's the famous example. We're going to get to his example when we talk about you know, the inspiration, so I don't want to share it here. Okay. But there are lots of, lots of, lots of stories that seem fantastical. They seem like an exaggeration. But all it was is that they were able to enter a state of flow in the Salah. They got, how many kids play basketball or soccer, they twist their ankle, they, they, they commit an injury, yeah. and they continue they keep playing. Going. Yeah. They keep going. They're enjoying it so much, or it's such a challenge, or it's the competition, or what have you. And then after it's over, they're in misery. <laughs> right? After it's over, they're in misery. Yeah. It's the, uh, when the adrenaline fades off, and then suddenly you get the post-workout yeah. chills. Yeah. I don't even think it's just the adrenaline, it's also the, the mental uh, state. So it's yeah. not just a physical response, but it's also their, their, their absolute focus on the, on the task at hand.